Tarawiyah. Our uh, our book, which we used this year, um, uh, every single night except last night because I wasn't here. I was in Virginia. I just arrived from airport, and I found that Sogi messed up the mic. <laughs> so you forgive me because I I don't have a mic. So the book that we have uh, this year that we learned together is the book of Imam Al Akhtari Rahmatullah Ali. It's a Mukhtasar, uh, very summarized book, yet very interesting and very important. We started the um, uh, chapter or the section of Janaba. Today, um, the author is going to tell us things one who is in the state of Janaba cannot do. Janaba is um, what is called spiritual um, impurity. Spiritual impurity or the great uh, spiritual impurity. He said it is not permissible for a person, okay, let me read the Arabic part first. It is not permissible for a person in the state of Janaba to enter a masjid or to recite the Quran except for an ayah or the like for the purpose of protection. Because the Prophet وسلم, uh, prohibited a person in the state of Janaba to enter the masjid and to read the read or recite the Quran as Ali ibn Abi Talib um, tells us. And the Quran itself tells us Wala Yunuban illa abiri atata So a person in the state of Janaba can neither enter the masjid uh, or nor the uh, recitation of the of the Quran, except to an eye or something like that for protection. Saying one is going to bed and he's in the state of Janaba, he cannot um, take a full bath, he can recite an ayah or, for example, an ayatul kursi or hajja for protection or something like that. And then he said, Wala yajuz liman la yaqdiru ala al ma'il baridi an yaatiya zawjatahu hatta yu'id al alata illa an yahtalima fala shay'a alayhi. It is not permissible for a person who is not able to use cold water to go to his wife until he prepares the tools, meaning he has a means of um, using or of heating the water. If he has a natural emission, then there is nothing. Then there, there, there nothing required. Nothing is required of him, meaning one cannot has have anything with uh, one's wife if they have cold water and they know that after they finish they need a full bath and um, they have no means to hit the water then they are not allowed why because time of salah is coming and they will not be able to make salah but if one has you know nocturnal emission he was uh, sleeping and he had a wet dream then in that case he has to use the, the, the water anymore, uh, anyway. So he can go to his wife, even if he doesn't have water, then he can use other means, he can use instead of water to make salah. And those are the means he is about to tell us. That's why after this chapter he brings about, he brings about the chapter of tayammum. Tayammum, because tayammum. Tayammum is dry ablution with pure, pure earth, or with, well, with, with, with pure earth. You know, this thing is a deal of easiness. Whenever it is difficult, it becomes easy. It is only difficult when one does not know. It is only difficult when one does not know. But it is not also as easy as we think. Like someone told me earlier that we can break our first five minutes before Maghrib. And he's not alone, believe me. I have met many people who do the same. You know, they say, you know, that's what we used to do. That's what we know. But you know, you know, you know, you know, so nobody has the right to break their fast even one minute before Maghrib. Even one minute, even one second if you know before Maghrib. What we say is when Maghrib time comes, you break your fast and you are given time to prepare for Salah. To prepare for Salah. But Allah wa Ta'ala says, then you complete the fasting until the entrance of the night. So until the night has come, you cannot eat. But because Maghrib, 
the scholars want, to, want you to pray Maghrib as soon as it gets in, but now it's a fasting time. You are given a break. So to take care, to fast, to break your fast, then you have minutes of preparation to um, pray Maghrib. And I'll give you another tip. Sometimes we just say that Maghrib, the fact that you have to go to the house, that's an opinion of the scholars. But if you look at the hadith, Maghrib goes up to Isha. That is what is more correct, even though the other opinion is more famous. That also is something to, yes. Say it again. Mm -hmm. When it is time, you don't have to wait for the Adhan to end. When it's time, you can break your fast. Even during the, the, the time of Adhan. Because whenever the break time has arrived, it is very recommended by Rasulullah so I said to break your fast. So he says, La yazalu ummati bi khayrin ma'ajjalu ma'ajjalu al-fitra. My ummah will be in goodness so long they haste in breaking their fast. But when you know it's time, when you know it's time. So he's asking whether we have to ask for the mu'addin to finish or we can break as the time comes in. When it's time, you can make your short dua and break. And even after the break, you can continue making your, your, your dua because that is the time when dua is accepted. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, The fasting person, verily the fasting person, when he breaks his fast, he has a dua that will never be rejected. That's a time for dua. It's not time for just food. You know, when you take your, you know, your, your, your date, you know, take time to make dua. Because your dua now is to be accepted. Abdullah ibn Amr, when it's time for breaking fast, he used to call all his family, his wives, his um, kids, everyone, to make dua together. <coughs> because that's the time when Allah wa Taala does not reject one's dua. That's why when you look at the Quran, when Allah wa Taala tells us about Ramadan, in the midst of the ayat of Ramadan, Allah pauses and brings about what? The ayah of dua. And then after that, he continues the rulings in Ramadan to show us that Ramadan is a month of, of dua. When Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al-dhi unzila fihi al-Qur'anu hudan lil-nasi wa bayyinati min al-huda wa al-burqani zaman shahida minkum al-shahra bil yasumhu wa man kana maridhan aw ala sabari fa'iddatu min iyamin ukhara yuridu allahu bikum al-yusra wa la yuridu bikum al-usr wa li tukminu al-iddata wa li tukabbiru allaha ala ma hadakum wa la'allakum tashkurun then wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni and he um, brings this ayah of, of, of dua to show us this is the best moment you can make dua because it's the moment when you kill your ego you are thirsty you are hungry you know you're fasting you know you are in the masjid you are praying you read more Quran you know shaitan is chained now doors of heaven are open make dua so he says so he says, A traveler may perform tayammum if he is not being disobedient in his travels. If a person travels and it's time for salah and he doesn't have water to make wudu, he's not going to say, oh, I have to wait until I go home. I have to wait until I arrive. You know, it is better to pray on time without wudu, of course with tayammum, than to wait until arriving home to make wudu and pray after the time has passed. Because Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, inna salata, verily salah, kanat alil mu'minina kitaban mufuda, has an appointed time upon every single believer. So when I travel, I'm in the middle of the road, I have no water, and by the time I arrive, time will pass, what should I do? I get up and make tayammum. That's called earthly ablution. And tayammum is very easy. You just put your two hands on the, on the, on the earth and then you make the face and then you um, wipe the, 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 the hands. And that's very, very easy, inshallah, he will tell us the, will tell us the details. He says, but if I am traveling to disobey Allah, I am not given this permission because this is a ruksa. So you cannot be given ruksa while disobeying the one who gives you ruksa. 
because that's Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. That's why he says a traveler may perform tayammum if he is not being disobedient in his travels and does not have any water. The sick person may perform tayammum for an obligatory prayer, farm, or recommended prayer, nafila. The sick person who cannot utilize, not the sick person, period. The sick person, sick person that, that cannot utilize the water, cannot use the water. For example, if he uses the water, his sickness will increase, or it delays to cure, or it can harm him in, diff in, in different ways. This person is given now permission to, you know, leave the water and make make tayammu for both fard and nafila, meaning for the five daily prayers or for um, voluntary prayers. Then he say, The healthy resident, my the healthy who is not traveling, who is who is the, whose home may perform tayammu. If he fears that he will lose the time of the prayer. I am home, but there's no water. And there's no way I can have water by the time salah, um, by the time the salah time ends. I'm not gonna say, oh, let me just wait until the water comes back. I have to make time before time flies. Yes. Uh, the way fact you make a yeah. 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 He will tell us later, later on things with which you can use to make time. That's that's the time. That's when you don't have water, or you have water but you cannot utilize it because of your condition of health. Yes, it's good. Yes, it's good. Yeah, but he says that the, the person who is not traveling, who is at home, who has no water, and the time is passing, and he knows or he fears that by the time he has water, time will pass. He must perform tayammum and make salah. You know? And he says, And he says, And he says, And he says, And the healthy resident may not perform tayammum for a recommended prayer, juma, or funeral prayer, janazah, except what? Except if, in the last case, the janazah prayer was an obligation upon him. You know, you, he says you cannot make tayammum just for nafila. You cannot make tayammum for juma or for janazah prayer, except if the janazah is a personal obligation. In the beginning of the book, we learned the two types of obligations, Muhammad Ibrahim. There was personal obligation and what? Collective obligation. Janazah prayer is a collective obligation. If there are others who can do it, and I have no water to make wudu, I'm not gonna say, let me just make tayammum and join them. I can't. But if there is no one to perform the janazah prayer, I am the only one there, then becomes now a personal obligation. So I must do the tayammum then, and do the janaza. So I will finish with this. Wafaraidu tayamu min niyatu, wa sa'idu tahiru, wa masfil wajhi, wa masfil yadaini ila al kuaini, wa warbatu al ardi ula, wa lbauru, wa dukuru al wakti, wa tisalu hu bi salati. He says the obligations of tayamu are obligations. Faraid, thank you, brother. Jazakullah khair. Faraid, in the beginning of the, of the, of the lessons, we uh, talked about the difference between faraid obligations and shurud conditions, you know, and sunan, um, the Prophet Sallallahu traditions, and faraid recommendations. Farid is someone that is part of the of the action, and if you miss it, it's not valid. It's, it's invalid. Like the obligation, one of the obligations of salah is what takbiratul ihram, the first takbir. If you miss it, your salah is invalid. Suratul Fatiha. If you don't say it, your salah is invalid. Rukur, if you don't do it, your salah is invalid. Is that is an obligation, yet because then it's part of the salah. A condition is like obligation. If you don't do it, the action is invalid, but it's not part of the same action. Like wudu to salah. If you don't make wudu and you make salah, your salah is invalid. But is wudu part of salah? No. It is a condition 
to be valid but it's not part of the salah or removal of 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 najasa of impurity from our, of our from our body our clothes and the place of our prayer that is a condition for our salah to be valid but it is not part of the salah itself then arukulu fi mahiyati shay wa shartu kharij al mahiyati and the sunnah, when we say sunnah in the fiqh perspective, is different from when we say this is sunnah. Sunnah in the tawhid classes is different from sunnah in fiqh class. When we say sunnah in fiqh class, we mean something the Prophet used to do all the times. He used to do it all the times. But there is no proof that this is an obligation. There is no proof that it is an obligation. That's what we call sunnah in fiqh. But when we say fadila or manduk or mustahab, three names, one meaning, mutaradifa, that means a recommendation. Something the Prophet used to do sometimes. Sometimes he start doing it. That's a lesser sunnah in the fiqh. So he is telling us things without which our prayer moon is not, uh, is not valid. And they are farai, they are part of it. He says the obligations of prayer moon are intention, the near. When we make prayer moon, we have to make near. To what? To remove the hadas, the impurity, or to do something that will replace what would remove the hadas. Because there's a difference whether Tayyamun can remove the hadas actually, or it replaces, it replaces only what could remove the hadas that is water. Because he said in the beginning that both um, Taharatul Hadas and Taharatul Habas cannot be done except with pure and, puring, pure and purifying water. So the intention. Number two was Sa'idu Tahir, pure earth, meaning a place where you make the place where you make tayammum should be uh, must be a place that is unclean. wiping the face, and wiping the hands to the waist. See, when you make tayammum, you see people, you put here and you wipe the face, and you put here and you wipe up to here. But up to here is the obligation. If you do up to here, you have the obligation. Up to here is a is a sunnah. And he said, وَضَرْبَتُ ardi ula, The first contact with the earth. Meaning the first darbas. You can do one darba, and then you do the foot, both the face and the hands. Or you do one darba with the face and another darba, another contact with, with the hands. But the first one is an obligation. The second one is a, is a sunnah. If you don't do it, it is still good. You can use the same contact for both face and the hands. What for the continuity? Meaning you cannot start your tayammum and you take your phone, talking to your friend, and after 10 minutes you finish your tayammum. You have to do it one shot. And then he said, well, the, wakti, the time of the prayer being in. Meaning you cannot pray, you cannot make tayammum five minutes before Maghrib and pray Maghrib with it. You have to wait for Maghrib to come in for you to make tayammum, for that tayammum to be valid for the salah of Maghrib or any other salah. The time of the prayer, being in. And the last one of the fara'id of the obligations of tayammum is that the tayammum is connected to the prayer without interruption. What tisalu will be salat. Meaning I cannot make tayammum after the time has come and go break my fast and talk to my friends and then come and make salat. Right after my tayammum, I enter into the state of صلى هذا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين.